Hello, welcome to Game Over Gherkin Man. This is of course Gherkin Man, and this is the first part of a 10 part series on Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. Recorded off a totally legitimate Nintendo 64, hence the horrible fuzz. We have one individual with us this week to start this, uh, this little retrospective. Uh, Mr. Mr. Person who is on the show, can you please identify yourself? No, I can't identify myself. That is unfortunate. Actually, I can. Uh, I'm Adam. Cool my man. You know, you've probably heard me from other episodes by now. You know what I do. Either you can stand there. Well, or you can this, stand this, 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 this is this bad. is people's. This is a this is a start of a new game. So it's good to say what you're doing in case this is someone's first experience. Ah, okay. That's well, the way. I am treat every program. episode as though it's your first. Okay then. I am a game programmer. I make ROM hacks. I sometimes do stupid flash movies, and I just live my life, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, Shadows of the Empire, this is a game that I bought second-hand from, like, a, uh, cash converters. I think it was, like, a second or the third Nintendo 64, second or the third Nintendo 64 game that I owned, and it was a launch title. What do you remember Yeah, this game? I remember that. Uh, I, my mom actually rented this when we first got the N64. She got me it with Mario Kart, and, uh, she also rented this game. And I, uh... <laughs> yes, that is a great story. <laughs> that was a wonderful story. That's what I like to hear. So, uh, something that this game had that no 64 game seemed to have after this was sick cutscenes, even though they didn't move. I'd take this over, um, really horrible 3D polygonal cutscenes any day. Well, it gets the job done. I mean, they're detailed enough. Well, I think they're actually, like, panels, because this game was based on a, um, and, and Mark will, when Mark comes onto the show for the next episode, he'll go more in-depth with this, because Mark's, like, the Star Wars expert guy. But they were, LucasArts teamed up with Nintendo to do this as part of a big campaign to fill in the gaps between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, which was a graphic novel, uh, a soundtrack to the graphic novel, uh, the video game. Um, it was like this big, massive multimedia uh, experiment, which was, was quite cool at the time. And uh, as, as stated earlier, this was actually a, a launch title for the Nintendo 64, and I think this is the level that sold the game to people. Uh, playing through the Battle of Hoth in full 3D, flying around. Oh yeah, that was epic in 1996. There was nothing oh, else like it. Yeah, this this was uh, this this blew the first time I played it. It blew my mind. And it's weird how like some parts of the graphics of this game, even though it's a launch game, still uh, hold up better than a lot of games that came after it. That said, none of the star all the Star Wars games that came after it, it uh, looked a lot better visually. Like Rogue Squadron, which we'll get to one day. That was a uh, impressive piece of tech, but of course this was before Factor 5 became a uh, developer for Nintendo. I mean, it looks like they put a lot of care into the textures and the models. The movement's the quite nice on those ATSTs too. They've got that little jut with, with the head going down and the, the walk cycles of the ATSTs, which is pretty a nice little detail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, of course they had to work within the hardware limitations, but they knew that when making it, and they pushed it to as far as it could possibly go. Yeah. At the time, anyway. Yeah, but obviously the, the further into a console's life cycle people get, the uh, the better the visual fidelity tends, uh, tends to get. Mm -hmm. I think also it's these levels that look the best, the ones with the... Uh, and this is the same for a lot of 64 games, actually. Um, anything to do with, like, machines or, like, vehicles always looks really good. It's once you get into characters... Obviously, the real poly the low polygon models um, don't lend themselves so well to that. But stuff like this, low poly works fine. Yeah. Doesn't bother me. Low poly doesn't bother me in general, to be honest. But yeah, uh, I don't. I, I just love the console. <laughs> well, I, I can say I was actually playing through this game on the uh, one of the Japanese Nintendo 64 controllers that came with the GameCube stick, as opposed to a traditional Nintendo 64 controller. And I found the game much easier to play with that stick. Uh, not so much these levels, but the third-person walking levels, which were clunky at the time, which we'll get into because no one had quite uh, worked out how to do third uh, third-person anything yet, especially not third-person shooting with a single stick. Yeah, it um, takes time to perfect it. I mean, 
I don't think third person oh, worked properly. And, oh yeah, flying. Around. Yeah, it's just things like that. It felt so. So. Yeah, and it was like playing the movie, which was a massive deal. Are you, are you a Star Wars fan in general? And I don't know why I just paused the game. I should have cut well, that out, no. but I didn't. Yeah, I, I got the I got some of the oh, DVDs and I actually got some original unwrapped VHSs in my room somewhere. Really? Of I don't like know how the, much uh, they're worth. The THX. Uh... Uh, probably. Re Maybe they're worth something, I don't know, but that's what I got. Well, those will be valuable because those ones wouldn't have any of the uh, edits, edits made to them. <laughs> oh my luck, that's probably what I got. <laughs> it's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth there. Uh, challenge points. Oh well. That was something this game had that I never got all of them in, all of them of. Stage complete. Yeah. Oh. I love the fact this game is in chapters too. I love games that have like individual little bookend chapters. Just something that seems to be lost in a lot of a lot of new games. There's a lot of things in this game which like we've progressed from, but I kind of I kind of miss. But the chapters are definitely the the big one. I I missed it when stages were individual stages. And everything has to be now one long sprawling. One, yeah, now it's just one big world rather than like couple of smaller stages yeah well it's kind of like one thing just le runs straight like leads straight into the next there's no you know i like i like the fact i can boot this game up and i it has all the level like i can just scroll down through all the levels once i've completed them and just select that one part of the game and replay through that oh yeah that's right it's like now you have to uh deliberately make a whole bunch of saves manually for each stage if you want to go back to re-experience that later on which uh frustrates me because I, that's not how i do things especially when i fuck something up in a recording like not have the audio record and i can't just go back to that level and replay it to get a new recording i have to <laughs> replay through the whole, the whole game thing? again which happened to me the <laughs> other day um i had to replay it through about six hours just to yeah, I like games where you can usually go back into like previous areas once you've got more items or abilities. Oh or yeah, the, me the, me the Metroid. More of that area. The Metroid uh, sort of dealio. Yeah, yeah, that's what's really missing from games these days. I mean, they got their little, they got little secrets here and there, but like the true exploration factor that you, you, you seriously want to find out everything this area has to offer rather than yeah. just trying to skip through it and just get to the next one just so you can do the same thing yeah that's a it's a different era and uh we'll go we'll go more into that next week because this episode's already wrapped up how was that this is the beauty of doing these things as individual levels every every level tells its own story mm-hmm there you go. So uh, join us next week as we get Mark on board and we go fully in depth on Star Wars and exactly what this game was about, why, and why it was such a big deal at the time. Thanks, Adam, and we'll catch us next time. No problem, man. I will see you.